get physical. It's Jordan here back in with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the third full week of July, July 19th until the 23rd, Monday to Friday, retail low print imports and our Cumulus Spotlight is back. I'm back in my office, so let's get down to business. This episode is sponsored by the EPOS H3 Closed Acoustic Gaming Headset. Bringing the intense gaming action right into your cochlea, this has the audio engineering to match its great design and comfort. These are high quality products that meet the modern gamer's needs. I'm primarily a Switch gamer, I mean, who'd have thought it? And this has come in very handy during late night gaming on the sofa, content I'm not disturbing my sleeping family with the cries of my fallen enemies. This is a convenient device, plug and play on PC and all modern consoles, including my very trusty Final Fantasy VII machine. No software required, just pop it in. You even get two different cables. With easily adjustable volume and a nice muting system for your mic, this is the best all-round gaming headset on the market. It even comes in two colors, Onyx Black and Ghost White. Which one makes me look sexier? Head over to epostaudio.com or click the links in the description to pick up your H3 headset today. This week we have Chris Tales. This looks to be a fantastic RPG, a love letter to Japanese classics of old. With great artwork, fantastic style, and those time-honored turn-based mechanics, this really could be a sleeper hit on the Nintendo Switch. There's even some time-traveling elements thrown in, just to get the comparisons to Chrono Trigger even more. There's a demo up on the eShop to have a taste for yourself. Although that demo is like a, a year old or something, either way, this is definitely on my shopping list. But even so, I did not see this coming. This is Elisa, Cartoon Soren, Michael Del Polito, Jonathan Rumor, Dane Wilkinson and Jcross7776, it's their pick of the week. Akiba's Trip, Hellbound and Debriefed is releasing this week, yes even in Europe, god knows why this was announced so late compared to the North American release, but anyways this is a remaster of the first Akiba's Trip as you beat people up to take their clothes off to expose them to sunlight, because they're vampires or something, that's a great excuse probably play this game. This remastered physical release should include an art book and soundtrack CD. And this is Vilos's pick of the week. Going for some culture. Terra Trilogy is a triple pack of classic arcade style games brought together with possibly the worst box art ever produced. This is going to be special now. This is something I'd end up creating in Photoshop. 15 years ago. Here you basically get two kinds of Lunar Lander and one Defender in all but name. They're not official or anything. Now, nothing wrong with those classic games at all. No shade being thrown. I am partial to a bit of Defender from time to time myself. Is it worth 30 bucks though? Well, that is up to you. I believe the US version is this week, while the European version has to wait another week or two. And Punky Dooster is getting all retro. It's his pick of the week. Now, where's Missile Command? Blasphemous is getting a fourth outing as a physical release. Good on your son. Yes, we had limited run, then limited runs Best Buy, then the Spanish one, and now the Team 17 one. I am all for it. Games should be accessible at all times. This is a brilliant Metroidvania style action game that we constantly talk about on this channel, especially Juan, he can't shut up about it. So I think that's high enough of a recommendation. If you missed out previously, then check this version out for sure if you want some quality. And this is God of Resins, Cigar Trucker and Alexander Kato's pick of the week. Go, go Power Rangers, the Battle for the Grid Super Edition. I think this is the third or fourth outing for this fighting game based off the popular kids franchise. A surprisingly good game to boot too. I think, and yeah, it's definitely I think, this release has all the content unlike the previous releases. Are they all on the cartridge? I don't know, but at least you get everything. This game is like the wet dream of 7 year old me. If a 7 year old could have a wet dream, this is getting weird. Sorry. Boombox is his pick of the week. Cotton Reboot is finally releasing in the West this week for its retail release. Strictly Limited's version is still doing what it does best by being comically slow. I think they're actually attempting to deliver it via a broomstick. You'll be waiting a few more months for those. Anyways, this is retail and it's a great little shooter I reviewed when it released in Asian regions. I liked it a lot. You get two versions of the game, a port of the original and a remixed version. Don't forget there's two more Cotton releases coming in Asia this year. Cotton, Saturn Tribute, and Rock and Roll, and I cannot wait. Anyways, this reboot is Brett McLean and Robotech's Pick of the Week. Are you ready? It's that time of the week again. It is 
Code in a Box Bullshit! We've got the Keep a Cheap Ass Looking Dungeon Crawler. We've got Lost Worlds Beyond the Page, a half decent looking puzzle platformer. We've got Urban Trial Tricky, that hopefully won't trick you into thinking is a proper cartridge, because it's not. And the latter one, that one, gets a US release as well. Lovely. And that concludes this week's Code in a Box Bullshit. Okay, that's enough. Now, I need to mention two games that appear to have left eternal placeholder dates. Yes, the kings of not giving a monkeys about misleading dates. We've got Badland Games. They have two releases that are apparently out in the wild. Do not feed the monkeys and Beholder. Both have standard editions and collector's editions in Europe. I make a point about not talking about Badland Games' releases because they have led me astray so many times and their, their dates on websites, just, just they're pointless, just ignore them. But apparently, two have actually finally released. All right, let's jump into the Lou Prince. Going Under is going up for pre-order on Tuesday from Limited Run Games. This is a dungeon crawler set in the ruins of a failed startup tech company. From that alone, you can see it's all a little bit tongue-in-cheek. It's action-based as you run around picking up items and bashing your enemies with it, all encompassed in a horrendous art style. Yeah, sorry, it, uh, maybe that's just me, but I really don't like it. But, you know, don't judge a book by its cover like me. I look nice, but actually, I'm horrendous too. This is a distribution title, not a mainline limited run release. Rolling Gunner plus Overpower was finally announced for pre-order in the West, this time via Strictly Limited Games. Let's hope this one doesn't fail. Anyways, this is a belting shooter, one of the best modern examples of a horizontal shooter on the market. There are 5,000 units in total, 2,000 of which are collector's editions, which you get many things with it, including a snow glow. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I think of hardcore Japanese shmups, I think of snow gloves. I don't know, maybe it's a subconscious thing, maybe they, they know in their heart that this is going to be sent out for Christmas 2022 or something. If you don't want to wait that long though, the Japanese versions are readily available, around for the same price really, especially with free shipping going on now and our discount code. Links are below. Connect Tank is Strictly Limited's latest partnership store release, it almost seemed like an afterthought compared to a Rolling Gunner. This is a pre-order for a standard release as well as a collector's edition that's expected to ship in October or November. Ha ha ha. Anyways, this looks to be an action puzzle game as you connect conveyor belt pieces together while under pressure. I don't know, it's not entirely easy to see what's going on, especially as it's made for one to four players. This is probably going to get a retail release at some point if their other partnership products are anything to go by and probably you'll get the retail earlier too. No wonder their partner store stuff sells so badly, what's the point? There's also an Asian version coming in September if you want it six months earlier than this one. Super Crush KO is Super Rare's latest game. This is a cool pastel coloured beat em up that mixes fast action with shooter elements. There's a bit of run and gun in here too, keeping your combo up, trying to get some free flowing action going on. It looks pretty decent and critical reviews seem to agree. There's 4,000 units of this available on July 22nd and 2,000 of them are going to be a Steen Bock edition. Very nice colour indeed. Now, there's not too much going on in the import world this week. There's three visual novels without English, and Japan is also finally getting overcooked all you can eat. But if you're looking for something to import, check out a video I made last week about the best imports of the year so far. It's free shipping month for Play Asia, so don't forget to make the most of it. And use our coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV. While checking out, you get 5% off any physical item from Play Asia and support your favorite video series on YouTube. <clears throat> All right, let's jump into the Q-Minute Spotlight. It's finally back. I know some of you did miss it. Firstly, me though. Well, this week I thought I'd show off one I've been waiting to get for a while, Children of Zodiacs. This is a great looking tactical RPG that has that Final Fantasy Tactics look to the layout, which instantly drew me in. Now, it does have dice rolling and card based stuff, but this is one game that I'm going to make an exception for. But game devs, you stop it with the cards, all right? I'm allergic to them. 
Anyways, this is one of Red Art Games' best releases, and like always, it comes in a nice card sleeve, which is subtly different from the real box art. Inside, you get a lovely piece of artwork too, alongside a mini art book for the characters. If you want some tactical RPG in your life, head over to redartgames.com and you can get 10% off with S Watch 10. Not an affiliate, we don't earn anything, just a little something for you guys. And this may be available at some European retailers, but without the card sleeve, so keep that in mind. Now for you guys, there was a lot. There was too many because you guys kept sending pictures over the weeks, even though I said don't send pictures, but you still did. And I tried to go back as far as possible, but at some point, I just had to say, Okay, that's enough. So, uh, I didn't get everyone this week, but I did get as many as possible. So, Yo Daddy picked up these games, a couple of limited run releases of No More Heroes. Personally, I am waiting for the Japanese double pack. Plus, they got Far, Lone Sales, which is from Game Fairy. Michael Wielczewski, many thanks for using our links and codes on some of these games. The wonderful Saga Frontier might be one of my favorite Switch games of the year so far. Plus, the slightly more obscure Coma Double Cut 2 horror games in one. Adam picked up these, including the Japanese Collector's Edition of Legend of Mana, only available on Square's Japanese website, so well done for getting that one. It looks pretty great, but I'll be waiting for my Asian version. Also, when are we getting an initial D game on Switch? I want one of those. Z had a wealth of games backed up over the weeks, lots of RPGs to get stuck into there. Also cute to see the reversible cover for Alex Kidd, very nostalgic for many people I think. Evil McLeod showed off some tasty games, including a European exclusive in Block Knockers, one for cultured people out there. Executive producer Jack Severus also got in a double helping of limited runs, no more heroes. The artwork is pretty great on it, I must admit. El Noel got in these games, including a sizable amount of imports. The train game, Journey to Kyoto, a super obscure release. It was supposed to be released in the West by Dispatch Games, but ha ha ha. Moral Coral showed off these pickups, very much approve of the Tyco game with the drum controller, pretty much essential. Love that game, I really need to get back into it. Executive producer Cigar Trucker showed off these recent pickups, cool to see the Japanese exclusive of Blair Witch really stands out there. You know which one that doesn't stand out? The Grindstone one from I Am 8-Bit, doesn't even have a logo on it which is weird. Ganicus picked up these games from VGNY, the limited edition of Golden Force, very nice, bright artwork, and Tanuki Justice, nice alternative artwork from the European one. Captain Slow picked up these games recently, love to see the legend of mana there, it's essential, that game really is awesome, and I need to be getting my physical copy soon. Executive producer God of Risen picked up the schlock fighter Fight of Gods, and the much more sophisticated Final Fantasy IX. Big thanks for using our links and codes on these. Thank you for your support. Villiv showed off a very recent RPG, Monster Hunter Stories 2. It looks really neat and those are some nice bonus materials to go along with it. Jeff N, thank you for using our links and codes to pick up these. Nice to see Aria Chronicle arriving early. Seems like it came with a pre-order bonus CD, and I'm jealous. Certified got in the Zelda hype alongside Chicken Police, a weird but very good adventure game. It's available in North America, but I think it's exclusive to one of the stores. I think GameStop off the top of my head. Executive producer Cartoon Soren picked up these. Lots of great limited run stuff. Have the great artwork there for Blue Fire. It's gorgeous. Art Phoenix Assorted showed off some variants of the recent Wonder Boy game. I think I like the Japanese one the best. How about you? Executive producer Robotech showed off these games. They got the Dungeon of Nibbushmagwana. Uh, I look forward to not saying that one too often. Peter Clark picked up these games recently, including the second game at the top, an obscure visual novel, Bakumatsu Renka Shin Sengumi, uh, which, as you may see, has English. Visipon picked up these three games. Red Art recently had a sale, so I think two of those must be from that. Plus, a nice little bit of class, a North American exclusive in Peach Ball. Crits Cat, many thanks for using our links and codes on this game. I honestly don't remember the name of it, but it's supposed to be a decent tool for intermediate Japanese learners to practice their characters. Executive producer Punky Duster did what he does best, showing off inside the cart case with some fine indie releases. I heard that the physical for Bite the Bullet had some uh, technical issues. I hope they've sorted that out by now. Joel Parker picked up the recent retail release of the Hotline Miami Collection. The first it's been in Europe, I think, and I think this has the best artwork as well. 
Droogie Forever got in Skyward Sword alongside a nice looking third party controller. W Scott W sent in this photo of some great imports, good old Fight Crab, Jump King and the Japanese version of Monster Boy which I think is easier to get a hold of than the US one. Ike, many thanks for using our links and codes on Darius alongside a couple of great shmups. I really hope Ryzen will get uh, more copies in the future because the demand really is there for that one. Vast Neon sent in this photo of Mario Golf Super Rush. Are you all having fun with this one? I haven't seen it too much in the in the photos being sent in though. Irina picked up these games recently, a couple of European exclusives in there, which will appear in one of the videos detailing the European exclusives. Look out for Wednesday. Joshua Brown picked up these, the fantastic Ninja Gaiden collection and the rather fun, quirky import of Earth Defense Force, Will Brothers. I keep wanting to boot that up and play it again. Vey picked up these games, he's in Japan so gets all the imports at retail basically. Nice to see Aria Chronicle, the absolutely fantastic Legend of Mana, Super Mash and everyone Spelunker down there at the bottom right. It's funny he has to import the American versions of games. Alright guys, let's have a roundup. Steven665, King Kin, Raven Knight, Parsnip Coffee, JP, Gavin, Jason Woodbury, Black Star, Michael the Switch Guy, Radio to Rancid, Ying, Sosha, Mr. Valgard, Shadow007, Champ Dancer, Yusha, Riz, Neverbirth, Caterpie, Starvy, Lord Vapor, West Country Blue, Marty Ma, Goma, Silver House, Ninja Darkovia, Bryson Caldwell, Pabs, Stephen Domit, Tyson Bailey. Alright, I know I didn't get everyone. Some sent it too late, some sent them way too early. So if you really want me to show the picture you sent but I didn't show, then please send it again. You can send me your pictures on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or tag me in the post and use the hashtag let's get physical. We also have an email you can send it to at switchwatchspotlight at gmail.com and we have a Discord which is a nice way for us to have a chat with you guys and you can send your pictures there in the submissions section. Discord server link is below. Please only send me one picture per week. Right guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physical. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boom Box, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, Jcross7776, Elissa, Punky Dusta, Michael Del Polito, Cigar Trucker, Cartoon Sorum, Jack Severus, Vilos, Robotech. Thank you ever so much for your wonderful support. And you guys watching right now, if you watched all the way through, what a legend you are. Give me a high five in the comments and I'll give you a high five back. The longer you watch, the more it helps this series grow. We really have grown these last six months and it's all down to you. Thank you. Here are some of our other stuff. Have a good one. <laughs>